Hello, my name is Jerry Brand and I'm a professor here at the University of Texas. And uh, today I would like to introduce you to cells, particularly the functions and structures of cells. Um, let me start off by giving you a visual picture. Let's suppose we magnify a human being by about 50,000 times, huge amount. And we magnify everything in that human being, including all the molecules and any other organisms associated with it 50,000 times. And then we lay that human being down on I-35 so it stretches somewhere about between here and San Marcos. We look up close at that human being then and what we see, every part of it is made up of little structures that are surrounded by membranes. And those little structures, of course, are cells. If we count them, we would find there might be 10 or 20 trillion cells altogether, huge number, and each one would have its own unique shape and size. If we in fact then stand back a little bit and look at the whole human being, we would find fluids flowing various places uh, from one place to another, almost like giant rivers. And in, that, in those rivers would be some cells embedded, but also a lot of individual molecules and aggregates of molecules moving from one place to another. Um, if we study where those molecules are coming from, where they're going, we see they're coming from cells in the human being, and they're moving from place to place until another cell recognizes them and grabs them and adheres to them, sticks to them and pulls them up into the cell. So that's a pretty curious phenomenon. So one thing we might want to do is take a look and see what those, what's causing those cells to stick and be taken up. To do that, we look at the membrane that surrounds the cell. And if we do that, we might want to slice into the membrane and look edge on, and we see there's all kinds of molecules in there. And each one seems to have a specific function. Uh, one of the important functions is to identify a specific molecule it's interested in, in that flowing river, grab it, pull it into the cell. So membranes of cells are exceedingly important. They're not just passive barriers that keep things in and out, but they actually play many active roles in the cell. All right, let's go on inside and see what's inside of that cell. Well, if we look inside, we see there are a lot of structures, and those structures are all organized in a nice systematic pattern. Some of those structures that are called organelles are surrounded by a membrane inside of the cell. And if we look inside of that structure, that organelle, we find there are certain chemical activities going on, while outside of that organelle, there are other chemicals. Uh, reactions, other chemical processes going on. And so we see things are compartmentalized in the cell in different places in the cell. Uh, we also see that um, there are a lot of rod-like structures in various places in the cell. And those also form a pattern which helps shape the cell, helps to define its strength, and also it provides little pathways for things to move from place to place. And we find the cell is very dynamic in the sense that the molecules are always being made in these various places. They're being constructed into structures. They're being taken apart. They're being moved from one place to another. So they're very dynamic. And this whole system then is what we might describe as characteristic of the living state. So these individual cells actually behave like a living organism in a sense. They behave like the living state. Well, not only are these human cells behaving like the living state, but there are many, many other kinds of cells that aren't part of the human, but are associated with it. In fact, many people estimate there are about 10 times as many bacterial cells associated with the human being as there are human being cells itself. If we look at those little tiny cells, we see that um, they have the same kind of chemical reactions. They have the same kind of molecules as we found in the bigger human cell. They don't have all the structures inside, so they're simpler, but they have the same kinds of functions. So now, if we want to actually study cell biology, especially studying the study the structure and function of cells, it would be logical for us to start with these simple bacteria-like cells, understand the molecules, understand the processes, and then progress to understand more complex cells, like a human cell or other plants and animal cells. Um, after we understand that, the next step may be to understand how these cells interact together, they're orchestrated together to form the entire human being. And so um, we actually can't blow a human being up that big, but we can, in fact, use an electron microscope to blow up a part of it more than 50,000 times and actually see many of these things that, that we've been describing. So cell biologists now are capable of actually seeing some of the things visually that I've been describing.